Hello everyone, I just finished editing this video, I just want to say sorry in advance because I smacked my mic about a thousand times in this video, and so I'm sorry if that annoys anyone, I didn't mean to, it's just, I talk with my hands and I had my mic too close, I didn't notice it when I was recording, but in editing I noticed I smacked my mic a lot, so sorry about that, but anyways, on to the video. Hello people, I am Neurocomic Gamer. today I'm going to be talking about Defenders. Now, I'm going to do a non-spoiler section first, and then later I'll get into spoilers, so I'll give you a warning before I get into spoilers, uh, but if you have not seen the other Marvel Netflix shows, so that's Iron Fist, Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, and the first two seasons of Daredevil, I will be spoiling those, but Defenders I won't be spoiling till later on, I'll give you a warning before I do that, so let's get into it. Starting off with just the characters in general, so Stick is definitely my favorite character out of everyone in the show show. I really like Stick. He was a badass. He was awesome. He's great. He's very consistent with how he was in the other sh in, in Daredevil Season 1 and 2, and I really like Stick. He was he's extra badass in this show. Luke Cage is probably my second favorite character in this show. Talking about in this show, not overall in the Marvel Netflix universe, but in this show itself, he was definitely my second favorite character. He did some stupid stuff I thought was just retarded, but overall, I did like Luke Cage. And then I would say probably Daredevil is my third favorite character. There's some stuff that I didn't really agree with, but overall, I did like Matt. Matt Murdock and I thought he had some pretty cool stuff and then I'd say my last two are kind of tied with Iron Fist and Jessica Jones. Iron Fist had some good moments like the part you see in the trailer where they're all sitting at the Chinese restaurant. I liked him there. He had some cool moments there. I was like, oh, that's that's Danny Rand. But then there are other stuff where he's just, he's stupid. They just make him, oh, he's the stupid rich white guy. And that's basically all there is to his character. He just kind of walks in without thinking of anything. He gets his ass kicked a lot and he's just, he's just kind of stupid. And that's basically all there is to his character. So they did a pretty bad portrayal of him. And then Jessica Jones, I've just never been that big of a fan of because to me, she's kind of this like sarcastic jerk for no reason she just is and she's like that to people she likes and there's just no point when she's being a normal human being I like her but when she's just this like this oh, tough sarcastic jerk I don't like her she's just stupid and it's just it's such a put on and it's just it's I don't like it at all and she's not even funny when she does it like a bunch of other people are like you know these sarcastic jerks are at least funny she's not even funny she just she just acts like a jerk for no reason and I'm just yeah not a big fan of just Jones. I'll get into more later why because I'll be spoiling stuff but yeah so let's talk about the villains now the villains are obviously the hand as we know Sigourney Weaver's the big villain she's the main one um her talent was wasted here I like Sigourney Weaver but her character wasn't written very well there's some stuff that I like about her that they set up but overall I didn't care about her character at all she was just kind of okay Madame Gao is great as always she's that character that you love to hate you just want someone to deck her constantly but it, it's in a good way like you love to hate her and that's that's how I feel about Madame Gao and she was great um the you got some new members of the hand you got Sawan Day, I believe is how you say his name. I think that's his name. Um, he was really cool. We just didn't get, he just didn't have a lot, whole lot of screen time, but overall I did like Swan Day and he was cool. We saw him get inside some people's heads and stuff. Um, you got a new Japanese guy that I don't remember his name, but he was set up to be cool and then just ultimately failed and I didn't care about him at all. And then you have someone else that's a member of the hand that I won't really spoil, but that person I didn't care about either. And so the hand was just kind of lackluster. They weren't that good of villains. Um, but yeah, just the, the heroes I liked overall, but the villains I didn't really care about. The side characters, I really liked Foggy in the show. Karen was fine. I didn't really care about Colleen Wing. They gave her a subplot that to me took away from other stuff they could have shown. Like, there was no point to give her a subplot to me. It was just kind of whatever. Um, but yeah, I really liked Foggy in this show. Uh, Malcolm was good for the parts he was in it. I liked Malcolm. He's kind of just like a normal person that just kind of just keeps going with Je Jessica's PS. But I liked Malcolm overall. And uh, of course, I love Night Nurse. Claire's always great. And yeah, the side character was pretty good for the most part. Besides, again, just I didn't really care about what was going on with Colleen Wing. The overarching story, I won't spoil, but I will say that I, it, was, it was fine. It was good enough. It, it like kept the story going, but it wasn't anything that was amazing. And I was like, oh my gosh, plot twist or anything like that. It was just, it was just kind of there. It happened and it existed to move the show forward. The fight scenes in the show were very mixed for me. Some were really cool. Like episode three, awesome fight scenes. I really love. Definitely the best fight scene of the entire show. Then you have some that weren't very good. Like the first fight scene in the show is terrible. You kind of understand why because they're trying to hide the person's face who they're fighting, even though you know exactly who it is if you watch the other shows. But you still, yeah, you you know who it is. But anyways, it's, you understand why. But then later on, there's still some bad fight scenes like that to where it's, it's up close and it's really quick, choppy cuts. And there's no reason for it. Very few people can recreate with what Paul Greengrass did with his Bourne 
movies, like where he did some great shaky cam fast cut fight scenes that are actually intense and you can follow what's going on and really good. But in this, they try to do that and it's done terribly and you can't understand what's going on. It's like, who's like, what is going on in this fight right now? And I hate that during a fight scene when I can't understand what's going on. It's not good. But overall, I did like the fights. There were some really cool ones, especially when they're all teaming up fighting. It's pretty cool to watch. Um, but yeah, so it's kind of mixed, but overall I'd say it's like, like, 65% maybe like 75% maybe 70% of those fights are good I'd say that's how it kind of goes that's the ratio 65% to 70 of the fights were pretty good the rest are just mm, you can't really follow what's going on not that good um, if you want to know what to watch before this if you haven't watched any other uh, of the other Netflix shows watch the first two seasons of Daredevil and that's basically all you need to know there will be little stuff in between that you won't know what's, like what's going on like character things that are going on with their side characters and stuff but the overarching plot you only need to watch the first two seasons of Daredevil that's pretty much it so yeah, that's it for the non-spoiler section. Now I'm going to be getting into the spoilers of this show. If you haven't watched the show, do not continue on. I will be spoiling stuff. Unless you don't care about spoilers, then by all means, welcome. But I am going to be spoiling stuff, so let's talk about the spoilers. First off, let's talk about some stuff that happened with Luke Cage that I thought was stupid. So there's a part in this where Iron Fist is going, he's tracking down the hand, he finds a cleanup crew that's there to like dispose of the bodies for the hand, and he's able to, he knocks everyone out except for one, he chases one dude into an alley, and he does the typical superhero thing, of like he puts them against the wall and he's like I'm gonna punch you in the face and let's tell me what I want and that's what he does and then Luke Cage shows up and they start fighting and I like their fight it's cool to see Iron Fist like doing all these kung fu moves and nothing is working on him and Luke Cage just like what are you doing is he doing all this stuff and then he busts out the actual Iron Fist and he just like clocks him and I like that that was that was a cool fight and I really like that um, but then after that they talk about that and he's like you were about to beat that kid like an inch from his life and like how dare you do that he was just trying to make a living for his family he's trying to make money for his family how dare you do that it's like this kid could have applied at 7-eleven could have gone to a grocery store and gotten a job anything but he decides to work for the hand you even talked to this kid before and he did not want your help this kid is clearly an idiot it, it's not it's not Iron Fist's fault at all for what's going on here. Don't blame him because he was trying to he was trying to get information from someone who works for the Hand that did not want to cooperate. Especially because later Luke Cage does the same exact thing to Turk. Turk is another returning character from Daredevil that I really like. He's a great, funny returning character, and he's a career criminal, and he's just doing stuff so he can feed himself, man, so he can make money. That's the only reason Turk's doing this. How dare you intimidate Turk? Because he goes to Turk, and he does the typical puts him against the wall with the fist up to his face. He even punches, like, a thing of beer next to him to get him, like, all intimidated. And it's like, you did the same thing to Turk that you got mad at Iron Fist for doing? What? But... Yeah, and then there's another moment where Luke Cage gets on Iron Fist about his privilege. Now, they didn't say white privilege. It was just, uh, it wasn't that typical thing. It was just because, you know, he's rich, so he didn't have to work for his money. It was given to him. But I feel like the privilege is kind of negated by the fact that he watched his parents die in front of him and got raised by mon monks who would beat him on the regular. That's just me. I don't know. Maybe you think, you know, that's a privilege. But for me personally, I have... I don't think watching your parents die in front of you, crashing in the, the Himalayas, and then getting raised by monks who like to beat you is really, really privileged. That That's just me. No, he's got money, but I don't think money can't yeah, change that, especially for how long he went being raised in the Himalayas by people he didn't know that would beat him, but that's just me. So I thought that part was stupid, where he's like, you've got privilege. It's like, what? And there's also stupid stuff in the show where you have a universe where Thor, the god of thunder from like Norse mythology or whatever, comes down from the sky to fight aliens in New York, but people don't believe that Iron Fist fought a dragon. Like what? You know you're in this universe where this stuff happens. You have you're even like but like Luke Cage, who is bulletproof and has super strength, does not believe in Iron Fist story about a dragon or believe in the secret ninja organization called the Hand. It's like what? How how do you say this stuff is stupid while being bulletproof and super strength and having super strength being like that's not possible? Like it's so stupid whenever Luke Cage or Jessica Jones do that because it's like 
you both have superpowers, but you think this is unbelievable. That's just, I think it's just it's bad writing and it makes no sense. But yeah, it's not that big of a deal. But yeah, besides that stuff, Luke Cage, I really liked Luke Cage. He was that guy that was sort of the Superman of the group that genuinely wanted to help people and is a good guy. And I really like that. Mike Coulter just kills those Luke Cage. Him and Charlie Cox are perfect for their roles. They're irreplaceable in my opinion to where Kristen Ritter and Finn Jones, pretty much they could choose anyone to play their characters and I wouldn't be like, oh man, I'm gonna miss them. No, not really. I'd be like, oh, maybe we could get a better actor or actress for this because Finn Jones does a good job when he's playing just normal, normal Iron Fist, just normal Danny Rand, but when he tries to be tough and put on that tough guy persona, he's not good at it at all. He's terrible at being the tough guy. He's awful at it. He's just not, he can't pull it off. Kristen Ritter is also good when she's being like a normal person, when she's being a decent human being, but then when she tries to be like the sarcastic asshole, I don't think she pulls it off too well. She's okay at it. She's not terrible at it like Danny Rand is at being the tough guy, but she's not that good. It's not, it's just kind of okay. You can tell like it's just such, it's, it's a put on and not very good when she's trying to be like that tough sarcastic asshole. I don't think she pulls it off too well, but she is really good at just being a normal person like her and daredevil have some great moments and yeah so now let's talk about jessica jones and some reasons i don't like her one of the things i really hate about her especially in her own show is that there's a part in her show where she goes like my only weakness is occasionally i give a damn except for the fact that she always gives a damn she cares about everyone that crosses her path anyone that comes up to her and wants help she helps them and she always does it she always feels for them and it's like okay you put on this act of being this tough sarcastic jerk but you actually care about everyone and you help everyone. It's so stupid. She's always like, get lost. I'm not a hero. I'm blah, blah, blah. And then she helps everyone. It's like, clearly you're a hero and you care about helping people. Stop being just a jerk to everyone and acting like you don't care and you don't want to be a hero. Like, I don't like the H word. It's so stupid and I hate it. And to me, one of the parts of the show that was really stupid with Jessica Jones that's very hypocritical was there's a part where they're all at Chinese restaurant. Daredevil's like, no, this was a one-time thing because they just finished fighting. And he's like, I don't want to join this group or whatever. And Jessica Jones convinces him back and she's like, come on. We need to do this together or whatever. She convinces him to come back. And then five minutes later, she leaves. It's like, you are so hypocritical. You just convinced Daredevil to come back, and then you just leave. Best part of the show, though, was right before she leaves, uh, Stick looks at her and tells her, sit down and shut up. And then she leaves. I love that part. I was like, yes, yeah, Stick is the best. When he just tells her to sit down and shut up, I was like, Thank you, Stick. I loved it. But yeah, didn't care for her character. Daredevil himself, they made it, I didn't like when he was all whiny and be like, I don't want to be a hero. They did give him proper motivation because the woman he loves did die in his arms, so it makes sense. But I was hoping they'd avoid that trope because they had so far done it. Because I loved it in season two, where they're doing the typical thing of all his fam, of like all his friends and everything are like, oh no, I hate you being Daredevil. It's so stupid. You shouldn't be a hero. And you know, the hero generally like gets all depressed and doesn't want to be the hero and gives it up and blah, blah. But they didn't do that. Instead, Daredevil was like, no, I know what I'm doing is right, and I like being Daredevil, and I'm going to continue fighting. Screw you, whether you support me or not. And so I was like, yeah, I like that. But then in this, he just gives it all up. It's like, why? Why did you go through the typical trope of this with a superhero? I thought they were going to avoid that. Again, proper motivation was what happened with Elektra, but still, I was hoping they'd avoid all that, make Daredevil different, but no, they didn't. But in the end, I did like his moments with Elektra, and I thought they were done really well, especially the part where they're all surrounded, and he tackles Elektra into the alley just to talk to her. I like that. And yeah, Daredevil's cool overall, but he did have some stupid stuff. And again, like I said earlier, not much more to expand on with Danny Rand. It was just they made him a rich, stupid guy. That's basically all he was. There's a part in the show where he goes to the Shell Corporation that uh, the Hand is using as a front for being the Hand, and he tells them his entire plan and tries to fight them. It's like, you didn't think any of this through, and he's just an idiot, and then he gets his ass kicked by Electra. Like, it's not even close. I'm fine with Electra kicking his ass because, you know, she's the big one in this show that's supposed to, like, destroy everyone, but it's stupid that it's not even a contest. Like, Iron Fist is supposed to be one of the best mar martial artists in the, in, in the Marvel Universe. He can, like, can't even contend with her at all. And I just, I wish they would have, like, showed him at least coming close. And then he gets tricked into using the Iron Fist so she can use it on the wall to break through to the dragons. It's like, what? How was Iron Fist that stupid? He knew exactly what she wanted, but yeah, he was an idiot. I can get a bit more into the hand here. There's a part where Sawan Day is fighting Luke Cage. He kicks his ass, and that's another thing that's kind of inconsistent. Like, we saw that Iron Fist couldn't even get Luke Cage to budge at all unless he used the Iron Fist, but everyone else can flip Luke Cage and can hit him and make him go flying backwards. 
without using anything special. It made no sense. Like it was just like normal people were like, oh no, Luke Cage is going flying back. But it made, no but yeah, that was something that was kind of instant inconsistent to me because we saw Iron Fist couldn't even get him to budge unless he busted out the Iron Fist. But anyways, uh, him and Swande are fighting. Swande kicks his ass. Swande was also really cool. But anyways, we see that Swande like knocks him into the line of a truck. Truck comes and hits him, and we're like, okay, where'd Luke Cage go? Then later when they all regroup, we see that Luke Cage has captured Swande somehow. We didn't see any of that happen. I personally would have loved to see that happen on the screen. I would have loved to see Luke Cage track down Swande and capture him. But we completely missed that, especially because Swande kicked his ass earlier. So I was like, I wonder how he won that fight. But nope, we didn't get to see that at all. Instead, we get a whole subplot with with um, uh, with um Colleen Wing that could have been taken out. And we could have had cool stuff like seeing Luke Cage track down and capture Swande. But instead, we didn't get it, which kind of sucked. I would have loved to seen that. And then you have the Japanese guy who we find out it was behind Nobu. And Nobu was awesome in both Season 1 and Season 2 of Daredevil. I love Nobu. And we're like, this guy... And the stick tells you that he's the one that was behind Nobu. He's like the most secretive of the hand. It's like, oh man, this guy's going to be awesome. Except for the fact that he gets his ass kicked throughout the entirety of the show. There's only one part where he does anything, which is he almost kills Jessica Jones till Daredevil saves her. That's it. That's all he does. Besides that, he's just continually getting beaten. Like, that's all that happens. It's like, man, this guy was lame. He's pretty stupid. But Sawande was cool, but he got killed too early on. I was fine with them killing him because, like, okay, finally something's happening. It was awesome. When uh, I love during all that, you see that everyone's face is like, oh no, oh my gosh, he's got Iron Fist. When Sawande breaks out and he's got Iron Fist as his uh, hostage, even though everyone knows they wouldn't kill Iron Fist because they need him to get to their substance. Like, there was. They, you knew they weren't going to kill him this whole time they said they wanted him alive. Madame Gal even shoots a guy that's shooting at Iron Fist because she doesn't want Iron Fist to die. Like, why would you think that he would kill Iron Fist? But anyways, it's stupid. Everyone is shocked, but you see Matt Murdock's face because he can hear where, um, like, where Stick is, and he knows exactly what Stick's doing. He knows that Stick is moving up closer to, at least this is how I saw it, he saw, he mo knew he was moving up closer where everyone didn't know that he was moving up closer to Sawande, and he chops his head off, because everyone else is worried, but Matt Murdock doesn't care, because you he knows that Stick is going to kill this guy, and I like that, and I thought it was a cool moment for Stick. Stick has a ton of cool moments in this, like when he breaks out of there by chopping his own hand off, like kicking everyone and then running, I love that, that was awesome. Stick was definitely my favorite part of the show. There was a stupid part in the show where Jessica Jones is being tailed by Daredevil while Matt Murdock, and then she's able to get the jump on him because she's like, oh, she realizes that he's tailing her. So she's able to like backtrack around to where she's tailing him now, and he loses her, so he's like, whatever, and he decides to parkour in an alley. But he goes way deep into this alley, and it's only him and her in this alley, but he doesn't know. And he goes and he parkours up, and she gets pictures of him parkouring. It's like... How could he not have heard her heartbeat in the alley or something or her footsteps or anything? Because she's not exactly light-footed in the alley or anything, and she's the only other person in the alley with him. Daredevil, this guy that can like sense everything around him, has no clue that there's one other person in the alley with him. It was just one of those two things. Like They could have had her figure out his identity some other way, like doing actual PI stuff instead of doing something retarded like that. We do get some great character moments in the show that I enjoyed. Like I said, seeing Daredevil and Elektra reunite and Daredevil trying to convince her, like trying to get her back into her right mind. Seeing the good moments between Luke Cage and Danny Rand. I love their fight in the office building of uh, The Hand. That was awesome. Definitely the best fight in the entire show. And overall, I did enjoy it. It's a good show. There were some disappointments. Like I wanted an actual battle for New York. York, like they had in Dark Knight Rises with you know uh, where it was like the cops and and Batman versus Bane and like the whole militia there I would like something like that maybe with this but I understand why they didn't do it because then it's like okay where's Iron Man where's Captain America where's Spider-Man you know where's all these other heroes since like everyone's in New York it's kind of like where is everyone else since it's a big battle in New York so I understand why they did it underground it was just kind of disappointing that it was like the defenders so like four people versus like 20 of the hand and that was kind of disappointing and again the whole Colleen wing thing was kind of whatever but yeah overall good show i enjoyed it i'd give it like a 7 out of 10 but nothing amazing definitely not to the level of daredevil and i really hope that the that the punisher the show after this is to the level of daredevil because i loved him in season two of daredevil and i think he has potential to be this like another great netflix show so anyways please let me know in the comments below if you watch defenders what were your thoughts on it and i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i'll see you guys in the next one